presentation. This is the video a presentation for the paper called Recognition of Unseen Bird Species by Learning from Field Guides. This is a work that uh, has been accepted to WACB. My name is Andres and I'm presenting this work on behalf of all of my co-authors, so Stefano, Rodrigo and uh, Professor Sian Vecna and Konrad Schindler. Uh, we're from ETH Zurich. So let's talk about zero-shot learning. First of all, so assume that you have a, an input data set that has, for example, uh, images of uh, horses, as you see here in the image, and you have some information that tells you that a zebra is like a white horse with black stripes. So once you get a test uh, sample of a zebra, then you should be able to have a model that should be able to recognize um, this input image by using both the input information that you have from horses and the site information that you were given. We can think about more complex um, cases like this. So in the horse, you know that they are very similar to zebras, and this is uh, somewhat what we call the one hop distance. But you could think about more complicated things. So if you are giving a rhinoceros, this would be similar to a horse, but not as similar as to a zebra. And uh, this is what we call one hop or two hop distances. So if you have an input of a, of a horse and also some information that tells you how all of these classes are related, you should be able to learn a model that uh, classifies correctly a rhinoceros once you get them in the test data set. Um, we need a site information, um, some sort of site information to solve this task. It must be available for all of the species. So in this case, you would need them for all of the classes here. Um, and it should allow for meaningful comparisons between seen and unseen species for uh, this problem, for this uh, to work. So this has been done um, in zero shot learning for quite a long time. So we talk about site information. This usually you, you have uh, a set of seen and unseen classes and um, you have some kind of uh, embedding of the, of the, of the classes um, that tells you something between the species. So this has been commonly done with uh, Wikipedia descriptions where you just basically tell, uh, take the Wikipedia descriptions of each of the target classes and then embed them into some, into some embedding space. There are also some binary attributes where you basically um, have some questions about uh, specific classes. And um, there are some works using DNA embeddings to make these comparisons. This is usually done in CUB 200. So as you may know, this, this data set is not that big. It has overall 200 classes and it only has 150 seen classes and uh, 50 unseen classes. And it um, has approximately 30 samples per class. So let's look um, about what we propose in this work. So we try to we, we, we propose how to solve uh, social learning using existing information, and these are like field guides. What are field guides? They are existing knowledge banks. They are designed to be highly discriminative, um, and they are largely available for endangered or even extinct species. They were designed with the, with the hope in mind that if you were to go into the forest and you only have this book that tells you, and the, the, tells you descriptions and illustrations about uh, each of the species, you should be able to recognize them. And this is what we tackle in this work. Um, one of the largest um, bird collections of the world is uh, it's called this is the bird illustration of the world this is a data set that is organized and owned by the Cornell lab of ornithology um, it contains more than 10,000 bird species and they are very nicely organized in a standardized graphical style um, and the nice thing about this is that if you see the kind of species that they have they overlap very well with the common computer vision data sets so with CUB200, you have 196 out of the 200. With iNaturalist 2017 and 2021, you have almost all of them. There are a couple of species that are not there, but uh, there are almost all of them. And um, this is when we start thinking, okay, how can we do social uh, learning for iNaturalist 2021? This is a, a, an, an, um, a representation of the hierarchical structure of all the species that are, or some of the species that are in uh, iNaturalist 2021. And we make a split between the seen classes, which are the um, blue pond points here, and unseen classes. So if there are two species that have a common family, then this is basically uh, the yellow points, and this would be one hop distance. But if you have to go more hierarchies up into the label hierarchy to find the most common species, this would be the two hop distance. And you could do the same for three hop distance. So for example, you see this, this, this branch of the tree has all has seen classes and seen classes from one hop distance, two hop distance, and to get three hop distances, you need to go 
to the to the highest to the highest uh, hierarchy here, and then find all the three hoped unseen classes. This is just an example of how this is uh, how we propose to make um, take I twenty one for uh, zero shot learning cases. So the nice thing about this is that you have um, you, as you've seen, CUB200, you have 150 and 50 unseen classes. For iNaturalist 2020, uh, 2017 and 2021, you have much more. So um, for iNaturalist 2017, you have 381 seen species and 514 um, unseen, unseen species. For iNaturalist 2021, you have 700 um, species and many more unseen classes. And uh, for both of them, you have around 250 samples per class, which is much bigger than what we were used to in uh, CUB200. So how do we propose to use this data set? Um, one easy way to think about it is just to kind of propose some encoding, some embedding space that you can use afterwards. So this is the, the, the first proposal of our, of our method. So it's called contrastive encoding. Basically you take an illustration and you pass it through an encoding network and uh, you go over all the illustrations that you have from a sample for a certain um, class and then you compute some class embedding for all of the uh, spe species that you have in your data set. Uh, this is very nice because it's going to be a plug and play. It's going to be compatible with all of the methods that um, have been used in the, have been proposed in the past for zero shot learning. They're always expecting some kind of class embedding um, that is just in the form of a vector that is fixed for each of the classes and that it's been fed through the network to learn. Um, However, we, we did some far experiments and we proposed a more optimized way to do this. So where we compute what we call a prototype alignment. So we using the same encoding network, we feed both the illustrations and the real images. And from the illustrations, we compute something that we call class prototypes. So this is again, very similar where you just normalize all of the um, samples for each, for each class and you compute like an embedding and a, a class prototype and using the test images or the real the, the images sorry the real images that you that you get you cannot just at inference time you just compare how similar this embedding is to the class prototype that you have learned and then for inference you basically just compute a sign like a, a cosine distance there and this is much nicer it's uh, much more powerful it has much more representation power because um, it's learned end to end um, and you try to just come up with a with a joint uh, embedding space that would be for both the illustrations and the photographs that are fed into the network. So how are results looking like? Uh, in iNaturalist, let's focus for now in uh, top five accuracy. Um, first of all, you see that the illustration approach is much more powerful than the encoding one. Uh, it, it, in all of the data sets that we compared, there was a clear advantage of it. Um, we also see something interesting. So for iNaturalist 2021, since it's a very large data set, there's a proposed mini version of it that it should be, should provide um, just an easier to work, an easier data set to work with. And we didn't see really any advantage of having much more data uh, in 2021. So as you see, the performances are very similar, um, which means that getting more samples from the seen classes does not really help into the unseen task, if ever, in this case, at least, it, it seems to hurt it a little bit. And lastly, we see that uh, the one hop the n-hop distribution of the unseen classes is actually very meaningful. So we see that the performance for the one-hop, so the ones, the classes that are more similar to the seen classes, it's the highest of all them all of all of, all of them. And um, the more you increase the the hierarchy at distance, then the the more the the performance decreases. And the most challenging case is the four-hop distance. And this is very nice because it means that yeah, yeah there's a lot of room for improvement in each of these validation uh, in, in, in each of these validation uh, sets. So just to conclude, um, in this work we have showed how field guides are a useful um, site information um, source for zero shot learning tasks. Uh, we highlighted how it works with the bird images, but you can think about using a similar approach for many more field guides that are available out there. Um, we enable zero shot learning with uh, iNaturalist data sets. Um, with beyond uh, CUB200, which is a much more challenging and much more realistic data set than before. And uh, lastly, um, we saw that the hop distance actually relates, correlates quite well with respect to the uh, accuracy. So this is a meaningful split that should be further explored for a social learning task. 
Thank you.